Good afternoon. In our last devotional time together, I talked about how reading scripture requires our active participation. Because the Bible is not some simple answer book or encyclopedia, faithful reading of scripture is a conversation with the Holy Spirit. Now you could go too far in that direction, and if you did, then the Bible would end up meaning whatever you wanted it to mean. And that's not faithful either. The focus of my PhD studies was on this issue, and the fancy name for it is hermeneutics, or the philosophy of interpretation, and in my case, as I applied it to the Bible. The question is, how can we faithfully perceive what God is teaching us through Scripture? How do we make sure we don't go off in left field somewhere, or maybe we'll baptize our own opinions and pretend that they're God's word to us when really it's just what we think ourselves. Several decades ago, the Presbyterian Church put together a resource document called Presbyterian Understanding and Use of Holy Scripture. Now, with this video, you'll be able to find a link to that document so you can read it for yourself. It's 42 pages long, so obviously I can't cover the entire topic in this devotional. But I want to focus on one part of it the part where this document gives a summary of basic rules for the interpretation of Scripture. And these basic rules come from the Book of Confessions, which is a set of documents that describes our Presbyterian faith. So there are seven basic rules for us Presbyterians when it comes to interpreting Scripture. First, Christ is the center of Scripture. At its heart, the Bible is a witness to Christ and to his work. The whole point of the Bible is Jesus. And so your understanding of each passage of Scripture should direct you toward him. Second, focus on the plain text of the Scripture. What does it actually say? Now, there are times when allegorical or deeper spiritual meaning may be helpful, but your primary focus should be simply on what the Bible actually says. Understand where it sits in its historical and cultural setting and how it fits into the larger context of the book that it's in may help with this. Third, depend on the Holy Spirit to guide you as you seek to interpret and apply God's message to your life. I talked a good bit about this in my last devotional. Because the Holy Spirit is alive and active, he will lead you to new and different understandings of a Bible passage. You might have experienced this yourself when you go back to a passage that you've read in the past and suddenly something new and completely different comes before you. This is the Holy Spirit guiding you. But if you hold on too tightly to what you've learned in the past, then you will block yourself off from the new lessons that he wants to show you. Fourth is the rule of faith. This means that we are guided by the consensus of the church as we seek to understand what the Bible means. We listen respectfully to what past and present believers can teach us about the Bible. Now, as I just said before, we may discover new insights in Scripture, but these new insights should be consistent with what church tradition teaches us. This helps us avoid what I call the Son of Sam syndrome. The Son of Sam was a serial killer in the 1970s, and when they caught him, he said that God was speaking to him through his German shepherd to kill people. Now, if David Berkowitz, the Son of Sam, had been using the rule of faith, he would have realized that that supposed message from God really wasn't from God because it was inconsistent with what we know elsewhere. Fifth is the rule of love. Christ taught that the greatest commandment is a twofold commandment, love your neighbor and love God. And because scripture is a witness to Jesus Christ, our interpretations of scripture should lead us to a deeper, stronger love, both for God and for one another. So if you're understanding the Bible in a way that leads you to have contempt for other people, 
there's a good chance that your interpretation is off base. Sixth, the faithful interpretation of the Bible requires earnest study. It's not just something to be done lightly. We look closely at what words are being used. How are the sentences organized? How does this passage relate to the culture and the time period that it came from? And how does that apply to similar situations today? When you're studying the Bible, you're engaged in serious work, so treat it as such. Give it your full focused attention. Seventh, finally, is Scripture interprets Scripture. In other words, we interpret one passage of the Bible in light of the entire witness of the Bible. So if the sense of what the passage you're reading goes against what the Bible as a whole is teaching, then you might be off base. You can see an example of this from two devotions ago, when I was troubled by my understanding of Isaiah chapter 26, which seemed to say that grace was a bad thing. And that goes completely against what we find elsewhere in the Bible. And so this drove me to try to understand more about what this passage might actually mean. So, all these guidelines and procedures might seem intimidating to you. And you might think, boy, I'm not really up to the task for reading the Bible at all. I hope that's not your response. Because remember, God loves you. God is with you as you're reading the Bible. You can trust that he will guide you as you seek his guidance. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, we are grateful for the gift of Scripture, that we are able, through its words, to encounter you. Help us, Lord, to be faithful readers of the Bible. Help us to be open to what you're teaching us through those pages. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.